What is up people of YouTube? Welcome to Explore Travel Capture. My name's Cody, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of my new favorite lenses, the Laowa 10mm 2.8 Prime. Now, I was very fortunate to get this ultra-wide lens just before I went on my cruise, and I use this lens a ton. It is the perfect ultra-wide lens for vlogging, and it's just incredible. So today we're gonna talk about it. Now, if you guys are subscribed to this channel normally for travel content, don't worry, there's plenty coming. But today, I wanna nerd out about some camera stuff. So if you're into that, go ahead and stick around, but let's jump into it. Now, starting off with this lens build quality, it is what feels like an entirely metal housing for the lens. It gives it a little bit of weight, but nothing too unreasonable for holding and walking around with if you're vlogging. One of the big standouts is the front element. So I've had plenty of ultra wide lenses. They normally have a giant bulbous front element that you can't put any ND filters on and you're always afraid that you're gonna scratch them. This lens has an incredibly fast aperture at 2.8, but still, manages to make it so you could put front ND filters on it. And it has a removable lens hood. When you compare it to Sony's 12 to 24 millimeter lens or their 14 millimeter lens, where they have the built-in lens hood and that bulbous front element, it's incredible what Lao was able to do. This is also their first autofocus lens, which I was really nervous about at first. There's not a lot of shallow depth of field with an ultra wide lens, although it has a fantastic close focusing distance. You can get really close to things, but there's enough background separation that if it missed focus, you would notice. So those two big incredible innovations aside, let's get to what actually really matters for a lens and that is image quality. So let's start with sharpness. That's gonna be a very short conversation. Honestly, this lens is incredibly sharp. In 4K video, I couldn't notice any difference, but I'm not pixel peeping. Now, one of the biggest challenges with ultra wide lenses uh, is distortion. I'm happy to say that the distortion on this lens was negligible. You can see with some of the shots, the lines from my selfie stick on my 360 camera, it stays straight into the corner. And then the lines of the boat stay overall very straight. You aren't seeing really much warping on the sides or the top like you do with some lower end ultra wide lenses. So the zero distortion claims from this lens are accurate. Now with ultra wide lenses, I've experienced some pretty bad ghosting. I think that definitely comes from having the large front element, but there is some ghosting on this lens. When I'm shooting some of the talking points backlit by the sun, you see it, but throughout the image, the contrast and detail remains pretty consistent and great. So I was very happy with the ghosting performance of this lens. Now, one thing that I did notice is when I put on my six to nine stop variable mist ND filter, this is the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon version. There's a little bit of a vignette that comes in the corners um, depending on the lighting. This vignette is negligible to me, especially considering how wide this is. If you punch in to the equivalent of a 12 millimeter focal length, it's gonna remove the vignette entirely. And I probably could even correct it if I had a 77 millimeter filter instead of my 82 millimeter with a step up ring. So keep that in mind, but negligible. I don't even know if you guys caught it. Now, when it comes to vlogging with this lens, uh, because of how wide it is and how short the barrel is, a microphone is going to make or break your purchase. So I'm using the Sony ECM-B1. I'd say on top of the camera, it comes out to about here. Um, but if I'm using the top handle, the top handle will actually show up at the top of the lens um, with the microphone that I mount to that. So this microphone, the Sony uh, Hot Shoe microphones, they will work with this lens and you will not get them in the image, which is awesome. When I was on the cruise, I was vlogging using my DJI Ronin S. I had it balanced perfectly with this microphone and this lens, and it made for super stable vlogging, walking around footage. Now, ultra wide lenses like this, 
have to be used very specifically. So I wanna give this little disclaimer. If you think this is gonna be a great landscape lens, a 24 millimeter, which is also in my bag, may benefit you more. When you look at these two shots of our perfect day at Coco K from the boat, you look at the Laua lens and you're seeing a lot but when you're looking at landscapes that are further away, the 10 millimeter might be too wide. So a little bit of compression could go a long way. Um, that is why I have my 24 millimeter as one of my main drivers for a wide lens. And this is almost exclusively for vlogging or smaller spaces. When you're building out your kit, just know that this is a very precise tool that you want to be intentional with. But this isn't the end of the world. It gives a very unique look and a unique perspective. And when vlogging, it gives your audience a greater perspective of where you're at, really bringing them with you on the journey. You just have to be very intentional with it. Now, this lens is priced at $7.99, which I think is incredibly affordable for how high of an image quality you are getting out of this lens. My first ultra wide lens that I ever purchased was like a $300 Rokinon 14 millimeter 2.8 lens. The distortion on that lens was really bad. It was not sharp. You can't even compare these lenses. I would say this lens is more in line with Sony's G Masters in terms of quality. So you can't go wrong with this lens. It is fantastic. I definitely recommend it. But that concludes my thoughts on the Laowa 10 millimeter lens. If you guys are considering picking it up, I have an affiliate link down below that goes a long way to helping the channel. But until the next video, I'll see you guys around.